Hello, I'd like to talk to you about the asset reliability transformation and the maintenance reliability transformation in the context of the spectrum of reliability. And the question is, where are you on the spectrum of reliability right now? And where do you want to get to in the near future? So at one end of that spectrum of reliability, we could call pure reactive or breakdown maintenance. And that is where there is no real planning and scheduling, no condition monitoring, no real maintenance plan as such. There may be some PMs because of warranties and uh, you know, regulatory requirements or something like that. But the point is there are frequent failures as a result of the failures and the emergency work being performed, it is unsafe. There are very high costs. People are generally unhappy, especially the customers and the employees are often dissatisfied with this situation. So that's, that's at one end of the spectrum. At the other end of the spectrum, we'll call the gold standard asset management, where we are constantly thinking about reliability from the moment we start considering the design and procurement of any of the assets through spares management, work management, condition monitoring, maintenance plan, everything. It's all disciplined, everything's done the same way, the right way every time. There's continuous improvement, there's culture change, there's senior management support, there's the whole thing. Everything is disciplined, standardized and optimized. Um, we're achieving peak output, it's safe, it's environmentally um, sensitive and there's the lowest cost of operation. So there's the two ends of the spectrum you might say. So the question is, you know, where are you now and where is it you feel you can get to in the, in the reasonably distant, you know, one, two, three, four sort of year period? We designed the asset reliability transformation to get you from reactive all the way through to gold standard. And all of those, without going into the details of ART, asset reliability transformation, you know, we have defined um, 10 phases, uh, uh, 365 uh, recommended practices that are broken up into 65 sort of major steps. So we've really covered it from all the economics and getting senior management on board, culture change, um, the design of the program, the implementation of the program, the design of the asset strategy and all of that. Getting things under control which is, you know, and sort of breaking out of reactive maintenance, which is really the focus of what we're talking about here. And then, well, lots more. Well, I'll be here forever if we talk about all of that. But that's what ART is for. Now, there's no doubt that if you feel you are at that um, reactive end of the spectrum and you feel like, right, we've really got to do something about this, there's a tremendous business case, then you can seek to go all the way to gold standard using all of those recommended practices and steps that we have defined. But there is a point along that journey where we can say that, you know, maintenance is under control, that the number of failures are dr drastically reduced. We have basic <clears throat> planning and scheduling in place, basic spares management. You know, there's the core essence of condition monitoring, you've got a pretty good maintenance plan. You know, everything is basically organized and, you know, fairly disciplined. But the real point is that you're not having every day and every week ruined because something else fails. You see problems coming, but you're doing lots of things to uh, eliminate those future failures. So we're not at gold standard, but the point is we are able to um, you know, get uh, perform the function of the plant, uh, produce the products without constant fear that things are going to break down. There might still be a lot of failures, but condition monitoring is picking them up and we can plan and schedule and deal with it. So, if that's where you are now, where things basically under control, then you can shoot for gold standard from where you are. The reason we created the maintenance reliability transformation is that if you do have that sort of pure, 
reactive maintenance going on. It's just a lot of reactive maintenance. Even if you've done something about condition monitoring or something about planning and scheduling, if really you're still suffering from a lot of reactive maintenance, then you might decide, rather than shooting for gold standard right now, let's just back things off a little bit and let's just shoot for getting maintenance under control. And that's what this is all about. Breaking out of the reactive maintenance cycle of doom, getting things under control before we try to shoot for the sort of the, the gold standard. Now without going into you know huge amounts of detail, but you know the MRT process has been broken down into 12 steps. There are 12 steps of the ART process. The 70, 78 recommended practices of the total of 365. These ones are all focused on eliminating reactive maintenance, basically breaking out of the reactive maintenance cycle of doom. We're going to start by, after performing an assessment of where we are, what we're doing well and what we're not doing so well, and perhaps putting a bit of an economic value on why we're doing this, we're first going to get the relationship between operations and maintenance uh, on a better footing. We need to understand them, they need to understand us. We're then going to perform some criticality analysis and bad actor analysis so that we know which of all of our equipment are really causing all the breakdowns. Where is all our money going? What's causing all the downtime? Um, because instead of trying to focus on every single asset you have in the plant, we can narrow it down to just a small number of assets that are really causing all your problems. And if we can do that, um, you know, we can make a lot of progress in a much shorter period of time. We have to make sure that we have a computerized maintenance management system in place. And if we don't, well, we've got to put something in. Not necessarily the biggest, fanciest system that there is out there. That might be a more of a hindrance right now, but we need the basics in place. We need the basic documentation, which is we need a master asset list. We actually need to know which pieces of equipment are in our plant. We need a, a proper way to name those assets. Then what we have to, when we start focusing on the actual maintenance that we're performing, we have to unfortunately come to terms with the fact that we might be do, performing a lot of PMs right now that actually do not add value and could even be harming the equipment. And there could be some things that we're not doing that we should be doing. Now on the one hand, we could go through a really detailed RCM, Reliability Centered Maintenance Process, or a Failure Modes, Effects and Analysis Process, which would come up with a truly very detailed maintenance plan, but it would take you too long. It's probably going to ask you too many questions right now that you can't answer. So again, as part of MRT, we're just <clears throat> simplifying things. We're, we're just trying to break the back of all this reactive maintenance. So we're just going to go through this PM optimization process. We're then going to, and, and I should say that all of these things I'm talking about help. There's a lot of overlap between them. I'm describing the 12 steps, but there's overlap uh, between them. We will be doing many of these things at the same time. One thing after another, it's all organized, but this is just how they're grouped. So planning and scheduling. We have to make sure that someone is uh, um, preparing the, um, uh, the, the steps and, uh, and, and organizing the work that's going to be done, putting procedures together, prioritizing work, scheduling the work, and, and so on. And again, there's gold standard planning and scheduling. We're not shooting for that right now. We just need to get the basics in place so that we know at the very least what work we're going to do tomorrow. We'd like to know what we're doing in a week or beyond that. At least we have to know when we're starting the day, this is what we've got to do. And you know, everything's organized and people know what they've got to do and where they've, uh, and how they're going to do it. As part of all that, we need good spares management. You know, what do we have in stores? What don't we have? Are we holding the right uh, uh, spares and so on or not? Uh, and is it being kept in a good state? Lubrication for rotating machinery and, and hydraulic equipment is 
very important in terms of reliability. A lot of equipment failures occur because of poor lubrication. So again, we're not shooting for gold standard lubrication. We are going to do what's necessary to um, eliminate a lot of the most common failures. As part of the lubrication step, we, we've got to keep the lubricants clean, but we're also going to take that extra step to take care of the plant, the workshop, um, uh, storage areas and so on like this, where we're holding our spares and whatnot because when uh, our equipment is not clean it can overheat it can be contaminated and it can be a cause of failure it's also good for the psyche to look at a plant that's clean rather than one that looks like it hasn't been cleaned in, in years covered in dust and materials from your production process or whatever um, we are also going to get into precision maintenance, precision alignment, precision fastening, precision balancing, precision lubrication is, is part of it. Um, we have to do things right the first time. We have to do them the right way. Everyone has to do them the same way. If we can do them right the first time, we don't have the rework and we have much better reliability from that equipment. And we need condition monitoring. Now, precision maintenance, lubrication, and keeping equipment clean is about improving the future. Condition monitoring is about seeing the future and seeing what's coming. Now, you may be wondering, I've, I've gone now, this is the 11th step. You might think we're finally talking about condition monitoring. Well, remember, there's overlap between all of these, and which is clearly documented in our process. Um, but we also have to be careful that to do condition monitoring well and to get good results, we need planning and scheduling, we need spares management, we, we need to be doing something about the health of the equipment, not just monitoring that everything is in poor health. So condition monitoring plays its role and like I say, these, these steps are, uh, or these recommended practices do overlap, but you know, we're just going to get into the basics at the least of condition monitoring, although earlier, particularly with more critical uh, equipment we might get um, consultants in and that sort of thing. And then finally something we can do sort of late in the process we can take our uh, organizational skills, our cleaning and so on to the next level with 5S in the workshop so that we can be really proud of what's happening in the workshop. Now all of these areas on the one hand you might look at them and say oh well Anyone who talks about reliability talks about lubrication and planning and scheduling and spares management and, and so on. The difference here is that, again, we're not trying to do everything to that gold standard. We're not trying to be superhero experts and get it all perfectly right and because it just takes too long and it takes too much effort in one area, but you need to be improving all of these areas. All of these areas need to be improving at the same time so they support each other. So even though I'm presenting these as 12 different steps, as I've mentioned a couple of times now, it's broken up into these 78 sort of recommended practices, these 78 sort of areas we're going to focus on, but we do one at a time. But they do overlap. So while we're doing planning and scheduling, we will be doing some condition monitoring and spares management and lubrication and so on. But we need the, uh, the, we need the CMMS in place for planning and scheduling. We need spares management for planning and scheduling to work properly. We need condition monitoring for planning and scheduling to work properly and so on. I could keep going through all the relationships. Anyway, that's the idea of the maintenance reliability transformation process. If you don't want to go for gold standard right now, I mean, all of this is part of ART. We've just taken a part out and said, well, maybe instead of shooting for gold standard, you may be com more comfortable just focusing on um, breaking out of the reactive maintenance cycle of doom, getting that under control. And then from there, you can shoot for gold standard. We can Im improve in all these areas. Um, but yes, so, you know, from that point, we can then revisit um, the ART process. That's where we're going to take it from the maintenance group and involve everyone in the process from the design and engineering, production, operations, um, uh, procurement and, and so on. Everyone needs to ultimately be involved. It's just that sometimes to try and do that right from the start can be problematic. So 
I hope this little uh, video here has helped you understand what MRT is all about and how that relates to ART, the idea of getting maintenance under control before you try to really to, uh, go after the sort of the gold standard of asset management.